Fibonacci numbers are a never-ending sequence starting with 0 and 1 and continuing by adding the previous two numbers. The next numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, for instance, are 1, 2, 3, and 5. Later, the Fibonacci series was used to determine the golden ratio. The ratios of sequential Fibonacci numbers, 2 by 1, 3 halves, 5 thirds, etc., approach the golden ratio. In fact, the higher the Fibonacci numbers, the closer their relationship is to 1.618. Fibonacci was an Italian mathematician who discovered these series in the 13th century AD. The applicability of this golden ratio varies from nature to architecture to painting to music, etc. The shapes of the galaxies, snails, leaf patterns, flowers, conch shells, etc. all follow the Fibonacci pattern. Did Fibonacci really craft this beautiful sequence? It was none other than Rishi Pingal, an ancient scholar, who wrote Chandashastra or Pingal Sutras, invented the Fibonacci series in the 3rd century BC. In this video, we would refer to it as the Pingal series and not the Fibonacci series. This clearly means that Rishi Pingal invented this almost 1600 years before the Italian mathematician Fibonacci. One will be rather surprised to understand that he did this in the form of poetry in Sanskrit. Has anyone ever imagined mathematics represented in the form of poetry? Since in the ancient times, most knowledge was spread by word of mouth, poems were the easiest way to learn. This basically emerged from a concept called Sanskrit prosody. This is nothing but the rhythm and arrangement of tones. Poems sung in these tones were not only easy to remember, but also pleasant to hear. This pleasant effect is known as chand. Most shlokas are attached to a chand. Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Purvarukamiva Bandhanam Rudhutyor Mokshiya Mamrita the Chand Shastra is equally important to the musicians as it talks about two syllables, one short syllable called Din, the Lagu and the long one called Dha, the Guru. Several permutations and combinations of Lagu and Guru fixed the beats in a shloka. But how did the Fibonacci series emerge from this arrangement of tones? Let's jump into this sea of creativity, where one learns multiple concepts with just Lagu and Guru. We learn the Pingal series, permutation and combination, and the knowledge of beats. Let's assume one Lagu is equal to 1, and one Guru is equal to 2 for convenience, since Lagu was short and Guru was long. In one beat, we can just have one lagu. If we need two beats, we can make the following combination, one guru, two, all two lagus. We have two beats and two combinations. For three beats, we can have the following combinations, one lagu and one guru, equals three, one guru and lagu equals 3, 3 lagus equals 3. Here we concluded with 3 beats and 3 combinations. Similarly, for 4 beats, we can have 5 combinations. For 5 beats, we can have 8 combinations and so on and so forth. Let's combine these combinations 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. 13, 21, 34 continuing till infinity. This is nothing but the Pingal series 
which the Western world refers to as the Fibonacci series. We tend to discredit our ancient rishis and munis because we were never exposed to such marvelous techniques of learning mathematics. If we had stuck to our older methods of learning, we would have learnt maths with music. Wouldn't that be interesting?